All right, all right. What is popping? Bag Brigade in the house. I don't even know if anybody's in here. Pathetic, pathetic, pathetic. Um, but yeah, so it's your boy Chuck Taylor, the Bag Brigade. And uh, I'm sure a lot of people, well, most people know. Some people probably woke up and were like, why isn't the market open? What's going on? Well, it is Good Friday and happy Good Friday to all you good people out there in the world. Um, one second. I have to just, I got someone yelling at me. Hang on. Okay, anyways, um, so, yeah, so the market's closed for Good Friday, but we did get the PCE and some other uh, important uh, economic events, you know, that came out today, uh, so USP, US PCE price rise less than expected, um, that's the headline right there, we can actually go to actually get the real so core pce so the previous was point uh 0 0.5 percent uh the consensus was 0 0.03 and the forecast point, okay so it came in line okay uh personal income spending uh month over month uh previous was one percent consensus and forecast point that okay came in line uh personal spending month over month uh let's see so point eight so that's uh, forecast to be points at the so that actually came, so personal spending came in higher. So these are good things for the economy when you say when you say. Um, let's see. We also have the, uh, the we have the goods trades and balances uh, that came in basically and uh, actually came in a little higher. Um, PC price index month over month. We yeah, so that came in at point. This is not the core, remember. Uh that came in at 0.3%. Previous was 0 0.4. Um, and consensus that so yeah, it actually came in lower. Uh year over year, 2.5. Previous was 2.4. Um, and then we have the consensus was 2.5 and forecast was 2.4. So everything's coming in line. Retail invest inventories, uh, X autos, uh, month over month. That did come in slightly. Oh, wait. That came in definitely higher. Um, so these are all really good, you know, for the economy in a sense, not maybe for the stock market. Um, you know, typically why I say that is, is these are all good numbers, like, you know, what everybody would say is good. And so technically good news, bad reaction, and kind of what we've been seeing, you know, over the past few years. Um, core PCE index year over year, 2.8. So that, that came in a little higher. Okay. And then we have uh, Fed Daily speech today and federal Jer uh, Jerome Powell spoke today already. I, I don't know what came of that. But anyways, that's why the market is close. Let's see what's going on over here. So key Fed inflation gauges gauge rose 2.8% annually in February. So that's not good, guys. That's not good, people. Bad brigaders, BBOD, bad brigader die. Um, so we've got a whole bunch of things I wanted to just kind of run through with you. Um, if you haven't checked out our website, go to bagbrigadefinancial.com. Um, we're going to, this is just a quick landing page. This is where you can get your VIP access real quick. This will get you how to contact us through email. Just a little of this, a little bit of that, you know, terms and conditions. And then uh, if you want to join the, uh, sorry, my dog is barking. Uh, if you want to join the discord, boom, there you go. Um, so... Let's see what the Twits is talking about. I'm sorry, X, formerly known as Twitter. Hold on a second. Maisie! Quiet. All right. So, I titled the episode 
titled the episode, sorry. Um, <clears throat> what does, well, what does Al mean? What does all, what does this all mean? And what can we expect in the markets next week? And pretty much just kind of going forward. Like, I don't, I, I'm, I'm not doing this whole call the top shit anymore. Sorry, excuse my language. Um, but, uh, as I can smell, you always is, uh, the one talking shit about that. Um, but what I would like to do now is pull this up. And what you're looking at right here. Uh, actually, let me do this. So this is the SPX on a one week. Um, we have our MACD right here and we have our RSI. Um, is this on logarithmic? No, I believe this is a linear chart. It's adjusted, but look, okay. Well, we'll leave it at uh, linear for now, but I will be switching to logarithmic. I just want to go over a couple things. So, so on a weekly time frame. so let me explain what you're looking at here. 200 week moving average, 100 week moving average, 50 week moving average, um, and then you have your 20 week moving average. Um, this was uh, back in October, and basically we have been on a parabolic run uh, since then, on a weekly time frame. Um, we are above all major weekly uh, moving averages at this point. If you're in the uh, chat, let me know you're in here by giving me a GG or a 100 or a heart or a whatever. I don't know who we got, but who's we got in here? Um, I believe we got Dr. Rums in the house, I think. And uh, I don't know who the other person is, but it's all gravy. Give me a GG. GG, 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 GG. And we'll see who it is. Uh, more people will be coming, but, um, anyways, what you're seeing right here, and I, I'm going to, I'm going to go from weekly to daily to like, you know, like the one hours, 15s, just to kind of show you a couple things. Um, so what you're looking at is, so we were basically in, uh, October, we busted out, we were hovering at the 150 week moving averages, and then we finally busted out sometime in G uh, November and we've been on an absolute tear ever since. Thanks pro most likely to AI and Nvidia and the whole hype shenanigans. Um, so on a weekly time frame, I wanted to, I wanted to point out a couple things. <clears throat> we've been constantly just making, you know, higher highs, uh, higher lows, um, this would be the only, except that doji right there is kind of like the only exception. And then you know, just boom, boom. So it's, it's got a lot of momentum going to it, but I want you to notice something on the, on the MACD and which is this, the moving average convergence divergence. Um, hold on. I just want to test something real quick. Make sure my voice is sounding nice and sexy. Cause I've made the mistake before and, uh, it didn't, uh, didn't sound so hot uh let's see or if anybody in the chat wants to just let me know does my voice sound good yeah no it sounds good it sounds good for sure um i had to monitor it myself all right so hold on a second oh i'm getting oh no what what no let me uh, switch screens real quick. Go to the Discord. Somebody saying something. Yeah, no. We got some. We got some people on today. All right. Um. All right. Cool. Well. So, what I wanted to get back into, you know, saying is I want you to notice something on the weekly. We're gonna go over this on the daily too. But so on the weekly time frame, the last time we saw the MACD do something kind of like this where you had, you know, both, um, both of these, li both of these lines going, uh, kind of parallel to each other to the upside. I'd say the closest thing is probably right here. And let me actually drag this up. 
Yeah. Okay. So I'm leaning and also the RSI, it wasn't over. Um, it wasn't over, like it wasn't nearly where, uh, however extended it is that as it was here. Um, but what did eventually happen, right? We came down and this, I mean, and like we came down not to crash, but we came down and it also it falls right in line. Just like I was saying, these two lines with the MACD, I, you know, like, if this starts to, if, if the orange starts to cross under the blue and kind of follow the RSI, we may be due in for a pullback, not a crash, a pullback people. Okay. So don't get that twisted. Um, I hope that makes sense. Um, I mean, this is very parabolic. I mean, when was the last time we saw the RSI on the SPX that overextended basically right before the COVID dip? Does that, am I saying that we're going to dip like COVID? No, I'm just saying you're not, you haven't really seen it since then. I mean, this is how overextended we are. Um, and, and same with pretty much, well, not the MACD. The MACD is not going to be like that. But I mean, this was all 2021, you know, coming out of 2020. I mean, we, we look how high we were above, you know, and we just kind of coiled right here. And then in 2022, obviously you can see, things and then at the very bottom we uh the 200 week moving average saved us that is something that you do not see much in history um unless it's absolutely just like a crazy market that the um spx or anything for the most part most uh break below the 200 week moving average it is a very crucial 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 level of support or resistance depending on what side you're on uh, underneath it or above it. Um, so let's, let's go into the daily. Okay, cool. Now the daily isn't, doesn't look as crazy. We've been literally just riding the 20 day moving average this entire time, almost, you know, since October. Um, and at one point we actually broke below the 200 day moving average for maybe a week period back there in October. And I was, I was almost convinced that's it. We're going down. It's we're going back into a bear market. Well, I was wrong. I was wrong. Um, but what you can see here is now I'm going to focus more on the candlesticks here. Um, so we're making higher highs as well as higher lows. Okay, so, you know, that from a daily standpoint, I mean, that's, that's, that's straight bull. That's just bullish. I mean, higher highs, higher lows, um, holding the 20 day moving average. I mean, we are just on a rampage. Um, will that last? Will that last? I, I don't know. Um, I do believe now the RSI is just hovering here at the top. The MACD is coiling. When was the last time the MACD coiled like that on the upside? Right here, 2023. Okay. Okay. So this, this had to have been when SVB failed. Okay. Yeah. All right. So whenever you get these like coiling between the moving averages, um, I'm sorry, not the moving, well, on the MACD these long coils. Um, this is basically coming out of the um, SVB thing. Um, but just just take a look at this at right now. I mean, this is... Now look, I, I will show you something that will make more sense. Is do, do I think this can keep going? Absolutely. Do I think we're due for a pullback? Yeah, a healthy pullback, I do believe. I don't know if anybody in the chat wants to chime in. Whoever's in the chat, I don't know. I don't know. Y'all been weak lately, man. Y'all be just fucking. It's like, oh man, Chuck's just over here. We're just gonna let him talk to himself. We're not gonna. We're not gonna respond. We're not gonna do. I'm just, I'm just messing with y'all. Um, but check this out. Um, let me go ahead and show something interesting here. 
So I'm just trying to show you like historical patterns of like how these, you know, when things get overextended on the RSI and when things with the MACD. And I only look at these on, on like one day and two week time frames, really. Um, we're going to get a little granular and we'll go, um, you know, it, we'll go down into the one hour charts of 15 minutes, maybe even the fives. I don't know. But uh, just to give you a broad perspective here. Um, this was previously the all-time high, about 48. I'll explain what that means in a second. But anyways, and we broke out of it um, the, almost basically mid-January. You know, we were stuck in this bear market and recovering from here. And then, you know, we got out of it. So... Um, I, I did come across something interesting. I'm going to share it with you all. I'm not trying to make this too long, but, um, so for instance, I know a lot of you probably noticed, uh, let's actually move down to a one hour now. Now, when I do that, I need to take these off. It's just going to make it just all mumbo jumbo stuff. Um, and I, and actually let's switch to uh, the spy. Let's do this by just to, just because y'all are mostly more familiar with it anyway. All right, cool. Let me go ahead and maximize that back out there. That big boy, that big boy. How y'all feeling? How you feeling today on this glorious Easter weekend? Um, okay. So what you see right here is that's the volume profile indicator. Um, like th this just shows volume, like per candlestick, um, basically whatever time for me, this is the volume profile that shows like where the action is being traded. Like the, you know, I hope that makes sense. I hope that makes sense. Uh, point of control, like things like that. So, uh, this is the extended hours. Um, something interesting about spy this week. Let me go ahead and uh, get rid of the MACD right here. I'll keep the RSI on now. Um, so, I thought this was kind of interesting, I, you know, and it was a very, very, very low volume week for sure. Like very low volume. Mm. That's why I didn't really trade much. I don't really like trading these low vol or these low volume weeks. And I'll give you a perfect example why, but the crazy thing, unless you catch a great scalp, right? But on, this was, so this was Thursday, Wednesday, Tuesday, Monday. Monday, if I show you in a 15 minute, we sold off pretty, what, for that day, I thought it was a pretty gnarly sell off, right? Well, guess what? We gapped up, okay? Just to come back and not only fill that gap, okay? At the end of the day, we flushed really hard to the end, in the end of the day. Like just for no reason whatsoever. I mean, it's just, so that was two days of straight selling off. And then on, um, Wednesday morning, we gapped up and then sold the hell off. We filled the gap. Okay. So this would have been a good time for, I would say, you know, you fill this gap right here. Um, typically you know, once gaps are filled, they tend to start to turn back the other direction, whether it's a, you know, a gap up here or the gap below. And well, we kind of consolidated, we, we filled it, we kind of started, we got above VWAP and then boom, we just launched, we launched up. Um, you know, so it was like the opposite, it was basically, it was the opposite of what happened the, the prior two days, two days before that. Um, a lot of this has to do with a couple things low volume because short trading week and not only that um it's also got a lot to do with the end of the quarter you know end of the month end of the week like just rebalancing um so it was a really tricky time to trade so i'll even give you an example uh i bought apple um 172.50 calls uh for next friday so that had been the 5th of april I didn't want to buy the dailies um, or the zero DTs, but you know, I bought, this is an Apple, but basically what I did was, I mean, I can show you Apple, but 
So I bought uh, Apple right around here. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wait, did I? I bought Apple calls. Am I looking at the right date? I have to be. Okay, anyways, I bought Apple calls. Why does the chart look weird? I'm, 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 because this isn't Apple. That's why. It's not Apple. Okay, this will make more sense. <laughs> I bought Apple about right down here. I bought the 172.50 calls for the prior for the week following. Um, and my God, I tell you what, I think I bought five of them, and I bought them for about uh, 125 a piece. And I I did bottom ticket. I got it right here. It was just a slow grind up. And I was just getting it for, it was just insane. I couldn't believe it. I was like, why is this taking so slow? You know, just moving so slow. And I finally got out probably right around this area. And I'm kind of glad I did because obviously that came out. I just sold my whole position. Said I'll figure out something else to get into the next week. Um, but that's just what happens when you have low volume and, you know, things like that. We didn't really have much catalyst, but um, back to SPY on the 15. So, we kind of danced around basically we didn't do much we did i know we did make a new all-time high at the very end of the day yesterday uh 424.61 on spy um i think the previous was like 424.11 yeah um so we did do that um but you know my here's my concerns about all this um let me go back to the daily now I personally think I personally think that and don't do not mistake me when I say come down. Hey, sh shut up. Um, don't don't mistake me when I say this. I'm, I'm not saying we're going to crash. I think a healthy pullback, maybe even to come fill this gap right here at like four you know, just below 500 or even the previous, you know, four, you know, 495, 490, uh, 498, whatever. Like that's basically the same area of where we were, uh, at the peak before, um, wait, wait, wait. Yeah, we were 480. I'm sorry. Yeah. This is an adjusted chart. If I put it on actual, it'll actually it'll change that. I don't know if y'all know that, but uh, the when you put it on adjusted, it just all it does is account for uh, dividends. So yeah, we originally yeah it was, it was four it was four eighty. So I could see us coming back down to four eighty if we do get this you know this correct or you know healthy pullback. I mean, at the very least, you know we come down and probably fill this gap um when we start to make the move down and then bounce and then just come back from there um what does that look like on an hour time frame turn extend it off yeah so I mean, everything's looking very strong fam i mean everything's looking very strong but there's other things going on that i think um you know, you should be aware of, I mean, or look, earnings season has just come to an end. Now it's about to kick back off. I can't believe how fast this, how it's, it blows my mind. Um, and if y'all have any question, whoever is watching, I don't know who that is. Please do feel free to uh, ask questions in the chat or whatever. Um, but I want to do a lesson and history is what I want to do. But I'm going to do that with SPX, not SPY. And this is where these other extra lines and stuff are going to make sense. And I'm going to pull something up for you that I sent to somebody. So what you're looking at here, SPX Weekly, this this line will mean something here in a bit. Um, but what I did was I drew this line right here 
for a reason, and I'll explain why later. Um, this rectangle, okay. Anybody want to take a guess at what we're looking at right here? This is the dot-com bubble. Actually, this needs to be in logarithmic to make it more. Uh, if you zoom out, you can see the difference of, you know, how bad that actually was. This uh, logarithmic charts just, all they do is just adjust for inflation, basically. Um, and so, and then you get COVID, right? Um, you got trend line, you know, going all the way from COVID, or sorry, from two, two, 2009 low. Oh, wait, wait, we need to put the moving averages back on. There you go. Okay. <clears throat> Now, this will make more sense as I keep scrolling, and then I'm going to show you something. I posted it in the Discord before, um, but nobody seemed to want to con comment on it. Um, but basically, uh, this is the 2000 bubble, 2008. And if we keep scrolling back, okay, this is in 1969. These are the 70s, right? And, and then we, we busted it. See, do you understand where I'm, the comparison I'm trying to make? Like, it was two huge, like, downturns um, that kind of peaked, not at the exact same place, but similar. And it took almost, what, uh, 68 to about almost 12 or 13 years just to get, like, out of this box. Okay? Same thing happened. Uh, about what was that 1980? Yeah, 1980. Then we top back off at, at, on SPX about 1576. Okay, same same level even in 2007. Um, and and so 2000, and then we finally busted out of the box in 2013. Another 13 years. So these 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 historical cycles seem to follow one another. It's kind of crazy. Anybody know what this is? That'd be the 1987 Black Monday crash. Um, and then you had the 90s, okay? And then you had the dot-com run-up, and then boom. And then, you know, that took about two and a half, three years to get through that until we hit a bottom, and then we came back up, came back up, came back up, 2007, and then all hell broke loose. Uh, these are called generational lows. This would be another generational low. This is called, this whole thing, what I'm trying to show you. Now, I can't go all the way back in time as far as I'd like. I wish I can go back to World War II. But they are called generational lows. And they, it is a secular, it's called the secular bull market trend with your secular bear uh, markets that happen just about every other, hmm, let's just say, one, so 1980. Every 20 some odd years, we, you know, we, we have this run coming out of a secular bear. Then the secular bull starts and then we enter the secular bear and it takes about 13 years, just like this took 13 years to get out of. Okay. And then, uh, we are now currently on this portion of it. Uh, this would be the coat, like this would be considered this. COVID, right? Look, watch. Got at 1980, 87. So was that seven years? Yeah. Okay. Got out in 2013, seven years later, 2020. Boom. Do you see? And then another funny thing, and I'm going to show you where I got this information from. There said, so this would be similar to what 2022 was back in the uh, early 90s. Okay. Just after the, uh, uh, the the crash of 87, which would be equivalent in this for manner or form of what we're talking about here. Um, hold on. Uh, I, I hope y'all are following what I'm saying. So they run in 20 some odd year cycles and there's always, and once that cycle hit, hits its peak, it enters a secular bear. Okay. And it usually lasts about 13 years from peak to get break out of that peak. Um, so I would say we are in basically, let's just put it this way. I ran the numbers 
if this is actually true and this cycle actually does play out the way it does, I, I did the math, okay? So in 1980, when it popped out of this 13-year, um, you know, just bear, uh, secular bear, it was uh, trading at 126.66, uh, the SPX. Okay, 126.66. Let's, and then, okay, and where did, where did it top at? Okay, 155, okay, uh, 155, 1553. Five, so let's do this. 1553 divided by, what did I say it was? Um, 124.66. One, 124.66. No. It's about 12 and a half percent gain on the uh, S and P, um, or yeah, the S and P 500. 12 and a half percent. So if you do the numbers and you take this number, which is one five 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 nine zero. Oops. And you multiply it by that number. Well, that, ladies and gentlemen, is going to put us at about 19,500 on the SPX by, if I'm doing my math correct, somewhere between the years 2029 or 2032. Meaning we're at like, what, 5,200 now? 5,250? <laughs> uh, uh, Somebody say buy long term call options on spy. Just don't, just don't even hesitate. Just as far out of the money as possible, and let them ride. <laughs> that's insane. Or just buy it. Just buy the S and P five hundred. I mean, if that's gonna be, if here, actually, uh, let me. I, I posted it in the Discord, but let me pull the. Uh, let me actually pull the. Um, let me actually pull this. I'll, uh because I did save it. Um, let me see. Bear with me one second. I'm not going to make this much longer. Uh, but I do want to just give you guys a heads up on what to expect for the rest of the week. Um, so if I went to my... Well, damn. I know I, I, know I downloaded it. No, it's not there. Oh, that's that's weird. Oh, uh, you know where I know where it is. Hold up, 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 hold up. It is right. Maisie, Jesus. Okay, so I want y'all to see this. So this is what I was talking about. So look, here we go. Secular bear coming out of here. Okay. Ready? This is coming off of the great depression. And then we enter the secular bear. 1937 and 1950, 13 years. Okay. Then it breaks out. Boom. Comes up. This is now the secular bull from 1950. It's another 16 year run. Right. But then we had the, uh, this would be equivalent to what they say the COVID crashes today. And then it's doing this, uh, 36 month difference between, uh, the COVID crash or whatever, whatever that was at, at that time to what would be considered the lows of 2022. And then, you know, you kept going and going. So it, you could say there's another crash coming or like another dip. I don't know. But like, it's, it's just something to be, anyway, they, anyway, they call these generational lows. Then once you enter the secular bear again, this, this is another secular bear. It's another about 13, 14 year period until it breaks out of that, that scenario. And it comes up and then here's black Monday, which would be the equivalent of COVID. Okay. Um, 
and then another 36 months passed till till I think that was early 90s. Uh, I'm not sure what happened, but that would be equivalent to the bottom of the lows of 2022. And we fucking, excuse my language, we cruised up, just parabolically cruised up in the 90s of the dot-com bubble, and then it bursted. And this is that other secular bear, again, called generational lows, 1942, 1974, 2009. And we broke out of this in 2013. It's funny how these are just, the timelines on these are wild and how there's so many different things that that add up. Um, now we broke out in 2013. I had a couple little scares here or whatever, but in, you know, 2018 was right here. And then guess what? We had COVID, which would kind of match with this and kind of match with this. And then we also had about a 30 something month period till we hit the lows of October 2022. So it's kind of crazy to see all the similarities. So if this chart does play out, this thing, I, I'm t- it blew my mind, but basically it, it's saying, I'll read it for you. In April, the SPX will enter the 11th year of its secular bull market, signaled on the eight, on signaled on April 13th when it broke out from the 2000 and 2007 peaks. The secular bull market from 1950 to 1966 and 1980 to 2000 lasted 16 and 20 years respectively, which means that the current secular bull market is middle-aged and can extend until 2029 to 2033. And our view, this is them, not mine. The 2020 dip resembled the dips in 1987 and 1957, as I was saying. If this was half time for the current secular bull market, it does not rule out a 14-year secular bull market ending in 2027. Now, to give you a breakdown, secular versus cyclical. Secular means multi-business cycles. Secular means tied to the business cycle. Secular bull and secular bear markets experience sil- cyclical bull and cyclical bear markets as well as economic expansions as economic expansions and contractions so i thought y'all would find that interesting because i sure as hell did i sure as hell did i thought that was awesome but anyways what to expect my friends now we're gonna get a little granular and get a spy and we're going to take some of these indicators off. We don't need that. We don't need that. We don't need that. So, back at it like a crack addict. Um, I'm 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 picturing, you know, now granted on data and everything with the data we had, it's going to be a late reaction, you know, next week and everything. So just be careful. But I'm I'm I am I really am predicting. Um, a slowdown um, at the very least, if not some kind of healthy pullback. Um, with that being said, like I know we have earnings season coming back up, but you know, inflation is still very sticky. They rate cuts. Come on guys. We ain't getting a rate cut this year. And if you're cheering for a rate cut, then you're cheering that we go into a recession. Hopefully that makes sense. I mean, it's just, that's what it is, because they're not going to cut rates unless we break something in the economy. I don't know how many times I have to say that, but <clears throat> charts still looking healthy. I mean, we still, in the long run, guys, in the long run, this is a monthly chart. We still got, I mean, look, after it broke out, look at this. I mean, now, I mean, yeah, I mean, it, this stuff gets parabolic, so who knows? <clears throat> who knows i'm not going to be calling i'm not trying to call the tops do that shit anymore i'm just simply trying to provide information um the video definitely came down a little bit it was getting close to a thousand there but it just couldn't do it <clears throat> smci i know is is <laughs> smci is crazy this is insane there's donald trump stuff um, but either ways, um, where, how far are we on? How far are we going on this? Uh, what's, it, what's our timestamp here? Uh, 41 minutes, not horrible. So you want to know what I think to expect coming up? <clears throat> um, long-term and short-term? Long-term, if, if that uh, chart that I just showed you is um, accurate, the one, like the one, the secular bear and the secular bull, you know, we could... This thing could keep going. 
for years. You know, it might get a little choppy and sideways, but at the end of the day, I think in the short term, please do expect some sort of temporary healthy, you know, pullback on the spy at the very least and the QQQs and all that stuff. Um, you know, you're just starting to see weaknesses in certain areas um, like tech. Um, you know, it's just not performing that well. Like, and then that's, that's fine. Um, I mean, like all this stuff will get rebalanced. Yeah, it was a tricky week, but all I got to say is I wouldn't be, this is, this is my opinion. This is what I'm saying. I would not be buying anything long-term up here personally until, you know, we see some kind of pullback, um, and then kind of reevaluate at that point. Other than that, I I'm gonna be looking at put opportunities. You know, nothing crazy. I'm not I'm not saying there's a crash coming, but you know, who knows what could happen? It is an election year. Other than that, though, um, I I, <clears throat> I just wanted to do a quick video. I hadn't done one in a while. Trying to stay engaged. Um, if you guys have any questions, leave some comments below. Um, I'll try to go ahead and post some of that stuff in the Discord. If you're not in the Discord, I will put a link below. I think it's on the YouTube channel anyway. Just click the Discord link to get in. Um, other than that, I think I'm gonna I think I'm gonna enjoy this uh, Good Friday. It's been a pleasure, as always. And uh, I mean, yeah. Thanks for whoever joined. Thanks, thanks for it. And uh, I'll see you guys in the. Uh, I'll see you guys in the next one.